Good morning and Merry Christmas from our family to yours. We are so thankful for each and every one of you that make up New Life Church. And we are also so thankful for the community of San Leandro. It's been a wonderful year and we're so thankful for the blessings of God upon our family, all the families of New Life and the work that God is doing in San Leandro. And on behalf of my family, I would like to wish every member of New Life Church and the citizens of San Leandro a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Sean. 
to adore you we've come 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 to adore you
Christmas, everyone. I uh, hope you all are having a great day uh, with family and friends, and uh, thank you for taking the time to join us uh, online for just a moment uh, as we come together as a church family uh, to just worship the Lord together and uh, just remember the true meaning of Christmas. And uh, today I want to just share a quick thought from Luke chapter 2 starting at verse 8. I'm going to read a couple verses, and, um, and we're just going to look at this for a moment. Verse 8, it says, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in their heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. This, of course, a familiar uh, part of the Christmas story. And these shepherds are keeping watch over their flocks course is nighttime and all of a sudden this angel appears out of the heavens and pronounces this good news these glad tidings that have great joy this message uh, is to bring joy it is a message of joy and the announcement is this there is a savior that has been born it is Christ the Lord Christ, the anointed one. There is a baby that is born, a child that is born, that is the Christ. 
and the Christ, the anointed one, is the Lord. In this context, this word Lord is meaning God. Uh, so the anointed baby that is born is God. Confirming the prophecy of Isaiah, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And so this day in the city of David, Christ the Lord is born and He is the Savior. It is God with us. It is Emmanuel. And this is the announcement uh, the angel gives that is to bring joy. And uh, there can be this proclamation on the earth now of peace, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. There is a hope now that humanity has that it's never had before. A Savior is born, one that has the ability to uh, save humanity from the bonds of corruption and death. And th this angel says that there is a sign that you will know that this is the one. Because yes, there were many babies in Bethlehem, but the sign is this baby will be wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. And it, it, all of a sudden, there appears a multitude of the heavenly host, and they were praising God. Now, heavenly host, that means an army. God's army, God's heavenly army of angels appeared, and they began to praise God. And glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And so the shepherds now are on a mission to go find what the angel had uh, told them to look for. There is a Savior born. It's a baby. We're going to go find this baby. The sign is be wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And they knew what to look for. They knew where to look. Uh, and, and as they find this baby, they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. Once they had seen Jesus, once they had found Jesus, they then went and told the world. Uh, they went and told the people in that city. Uh, we, we see this parallel in this pattern throughout the whole story. The angel announces it to the shepherds, and the shepherds go and look. And then when the shepherds find what they were looking for, they then go and tell others. There, from the very beginning of Jesus' birth, from the moment he was born, there's this pattern all throughout his life. Word of mouth, uh, telling others about Jesus, what he had done, what he had said, who he is, who he was. And, and so with this, the announcement of Jesus' birth, the disciples, uh, or the shepherds, I mean, they, they, they find him, and this is the one. And there's something about Jesus that causes people that once they've found him, once they've heard something about him, once they've seen him, they can't help but tell others. We, we, we see the, the, the shepherds, uh, their response after they had found Jesus, it says they returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen. That's the same thing the angels were doing, the heavenly host was doing when they announced to the shepherds, Jesus is born. Go look for him. He's here. Now is the time. The angels are praising God, glorifying God. Once the shepherds found Jesus, they glorified God and praised God and they told others. It's as if there is a simple formula. Praise God and tell others. That's what we see in common throughout all of Jesus' life. People encounter Jesus. They meet Him. They see Him. They're moved by Him. They're touched by Him. They praise God and they tell others. It, it reminds me of what Paul says 
to the church in Corinth, I believe, where he says, I, I don't want you to be removed from the simplicity that is in Christ. Let's not overcomplicate things. Let's praise God and tell others. That really is the, the whole uh, gist of everything here. If he's really transformed your life, if Jesus has really impacted you, if you've really had an encounter with him where you know Jesus is the answer and that's it, the proper response, glorify God, praise God, and tell others. It's the power of testimony. Um, and this is what the shepherds did. After they leave this moment of seeing Jesus and worshiping him and, and all of that, it says they go and they tell others and they glorify God. But as they are um, glorifying God, it says they do this for all the things that they had heard and seen. That's another common theme with Jesus' life. A blind man is healed by Jesus. The religious leaders go and they question him and they say, you know, who is he? What did he do? How, how do you know, um, you know, he's credible and, and, and all of this? And the blind man just says, I don't know the answers to all these questions you're asking. There's just one thing I know. I was blind. Now I see. I can't speak for you, and I can't speak for you, but I can speak for the things I've heard and I now see. Uh, the, the leper cleansed. You can't deny this. All I know is there's a man named Jesus. I had leprosy but now I'm healed. I went back to thank him, and now I'm made whole, meaning the scars and the effects of leprosy. I no longer have leprosy, but the effect leprosy had on me has also been reversed. I've been made whole. Uh, there's this, this part of Jesus that we cannot lose sight of. We know all these facts about him. We know all the doctrines. We can quote a bunch of scripture. But there's one common theme that every person, from the moment of his birth to the moment he ascended back into heaven, there's this common theme. There's just one thing I know. This is what I've seen. This is what I've heard. It's changed my life forever. And I can't help but praise God. We find another example of this. Peter and John, Jesus has already ascended into heaven. The church has been launched out of the upper room. And now in Acts 4, Peter and John have preached the gospel many times, commanded a lame man to walk in the name of Jesus Christ. He's made whole. He walks. He's leaping. It stirs up the religious leaders in Jerusalem all over again. They've been imprisoned and, and such. And Peter makes the infamous statement in Acts 4.12, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There's no salvation in any other name than the name of Jesus because Jesus is the Savior that was born in Bethlehem. But yet then, Acts 4 verse 18 says, And they called them, and they commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge you. For we cannot speak, we cannot but speak the things which we've seen and heard. And this is what created such a stir in the city of Jerusalem. The people of God just talked about what they had seen and what they had heard. And word naturally spread. That's how it started with Jesus' birth. An angel gets it started, announcing it to some shepherds. Then the shepherds go and see for themselves. And they cannot help 
but talk about the things they've seen and heard, and they cannot help but glorify and praise God. And that's how it all started. Then word begins to spread. We read about Jesus' life as a 12-year-old boy in the temple, confounding the wise and, and the, the doctors of the law. Jesus is 30 years old, comes back onto the scene, and, and he launches his ministry, and he begins to preach with authority, cast out devils, heal the sick, change lives forever, calls 12 disciples to follow him, and they watch him, and as people's lives are being transformed throughout his three-and-a-half-year ministry, he tells them, don't tell anyone about this, but they can't help it, and they go and they tell others about this Jesus who opened my blind eyes, who healed my lame legs, who unstopped my deaf ears, who cast this unclean spirit out of me or out of my child, whatever the scenario was that we read about in the Gospels, all the way up to his crucifixion. He dies, he's buried, he rises again. Peter and John, nothing special. They just talk about what they've seen and what they've heard. And that was enough to turn Jerusalem upside down and ultimately it turned the world upside down. And it all started with an announcement to shepherds on a hillside. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. My question today is, what has the Savior done in your life that you cannot help but talk about what you've seen and what you've heard. Because that message, your personalized message of how Jesus has transformed your life is enough to turn your workplace upside down, your neighborhood upside down, our city upside down, this Bay Area upside down. It's not a polished sermon. It's not a fancy approach. It's a simple honest, humble testimony. This is what I've seen, and this is what I've heard. I don't know all these answers. I don't know anything about this. I can't speak for you, but I can speak about how Jesus has visibly transformed my life, my family. I can't help but talk about it. That is the power of Jesus in each of our lives, and all of that's possible. Because today we remember and celebrate the birth of a baby in a small town called Bethlehem. In obscurity, a Savior was born. And as he grew, God with us, Jesus Christ, transformed lives. And those people's lives who were transformed just went about telling others about what they had seen and heard about Jesus. So your testimony is powerful. And I hope today that on Christmas we take some time to prepare for the new year. How is your testimony going to turn your workplace, your neighborhood, your city upside down? How can you help impact our city through your testimony? Because believe it or not, what you've seen and what you've heard is powerful enough to transform a life because you're telling others about Jesus. Father, we love you. We thank you for your word. We thank you that you came to earth. The baby born to us of Isaiah 9 is the everlasting father. We know, God, that you manifest yourself in flesh as a human child born in Bethlehem, Jesus Christ, God with us. And Jesus, we thank you that you loved us so much that you willingly came to this earth and died for us so that we could experience salvation through your name. And I pray today, Father, that we would be reminded of the simplicity that is in Christ, that we would not waver, that we would not be deceived by complexity, but that we would simply remember it was Jesus who saved me, the power of His Spirit. And, and I pray today, God, that we would remember that each one of us have something to offer our city 
our job, our neighborhood, the world around us. Each one of us have something to offer because of what we've experienced through Jesus. So give us boldness this year to tell others about what we've seen and heard because we know it is enough to make you known and transform the lives of those around us. We thank you, God, for a wonderful year, the blessings upon our families, and we pray peace, protection, joy, unspeakable to fill the heart and mind of every person of New Life Church. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.